Hey, my name is Jonathan Hadel and I make music as Pink Buddha and welcome back to another Street Fighter style matchup between the Akai Force and the new NPC Live Mark II with its fancy armrest here. Speaker. Turned out to be a speaker. If you missed the last Street Fighter matchup between the Akai Force and the NPC One, click up here to check out the last one. So we're going to go head to head, 13 rounds, a battle to the death. Make sure you stay to the end to see who comes out on top. Um, I'm actually now thinking that would be pretty funny if we did a fight to the death. Like I literally smash these things together to see who won. I bet you under those circumstances this speaker would act like a bumper in that demolition derby. All right, so here's the focus for all the different rounds. Let's jump right in. All right, round number one, the pads. You know, this is a tough one because they really couldn't be more different. Big, huge, nice, fat pads on the MPC Live and these smaller ones here, which arguably are not as fun to play, but heck, you got a lot more of them. And you can even do some cool stuff where you split the triggering between the pads. You have those here and you can trigger clips up here. I mean, that's pretty cool. The NPC Live doesn't have that option. I have to say that I had been playing on the NPC One for a little bit and I thought that was kind of actually the perfect size. I am noticing that it's like a much bigger leap to jump around. I and mean, this is so big, but you don't have any of the risk of double triggering on stuff. So, really tough round, but I'm gonna have to go with the Force because you could just get a Kai MPD and get these pads, plug it in through the USB port, which I've done before, works great, and then you can just have all that feel of these particular pads, but have the functionality of this. So, All right, Akai Forest takes an early lead. Round two is gonna be about knobs. Well, it would look like an easy win in the situation in the sense that the Force has got all these eight knobs here, so that's already a great advantage. And the NPC Live has only got four knobs, although if you consider this quick link here, you actually have 16 and the Force has eight knobs here and then you can switch to another bank nine through 16, so actually they have the same amount. The Force definitely has got this nice window here where it shows up, but it actually tells you what's on them. And the old version of the NPC Live that I had before, I was super frustrated by the fact that it was difficult to remember what they are. The new improvements to this is when you go to a track, it actually has a little box that shows up that says Q1 so that you know it goes to this one over here. The other really nice feature on the new MPC Live software is that if you touch this, you don't even have to like turn the knob. You just touch it and it pops up on the right hand side here and that is really slick. So if you like a more conservative approach to knobs, the MPC Live would be probably a great option. The Force just has them all out here in spades. But for this round, I'm gonna have to give the win again to the Force, sorry. And for those of you who are MPC Live lovers, the reason being is when you press on this knob button, you have all these different choices for how you want the knobs to be configured, whether it be by the project, which you could program them and then they would stay there no matter which screen you're on, which is huge. The screen, these knobs are automatically going to assign themselves to the screen. You also have the ability to go by sends or volume and whatnot so that you can kind of mix things on the fly. And that's just not as much of an option on the NPC Live. So definitely an improvement around where things used to be, but I'm gonna have to give this round to the Akai Force. Off to early start, two wins here. Okay, round three, let's talk about buttons, control buttons. The MPC Live 2, if you've been comparing them at all, you would notice that they've added a few more buttons, which is really welcome, because when I played this before, when it was the first version of the MPC Live, the sparseness of the buttons was really confusing to me, because 
I mean, they have some space here. I mean, I don't know what it takes to program these kind of things or design them, but like, look at the way that the force has taken advantage of the real estate around here, putting in all these different buttons. I mean, God, they wasted so much space on the speaker. So, I mean, this one doesn't feel like a contest to me. There are so many more features here that would be nice to use. The only thing that I do feel like allowed the MPC Live to get in a good few punches here is that the record and whatnot is a little bit more accessible. I really don't like how Kai put the record and play and stop way up here. When they designed the push or did the push with Ableton, that was right down here in this lower left-hand corner. That felt so much better to me. Maybe they wanted to get it out of the way just in case someone bumped it. It's just a long way to reach and it bothers me. But right out of the gates, early lead, 3-0. Okay, this round is gonna be about integration with the computer. And in this round, this is an immediate knockout. I mean, no wasted time. NBC Live pff, completely takes out the force, being that there is no computer software for the force. There's no way to access it, integrate with it, change the sounds, do any of that kind of stuff. Let's face it, these screens, they pretty much suck. You do not want to produce a whole song on such a little tiny screen. I'm sorry, I just don't wanna do it. It's like working on a little tiny laptop. So the fact that you can take the MPC Live, plug it in the computer and synchronize between the two of them, this was like they stepped in the ring and the MPC Live just wipes out the Kai Force. Here I go! Okay, round five. Like I said, don't underestimate the NPC Live. This match is by no means over. So make sure you stay to the end to see who wins. Round five, we're gonna talk about sampling, which is sort of the heart of Akai. The NPC Live is legendary for that, of course. And it's got a new improvement here, which is an option right on these buttons. You just simply hit shift and then the sampler and boom, you're right there with the sampler. The force, there's no quick button that you need to push. You have to go to menu and then click over in sampler, which isn't that bad. But I tell you, having a button that you can just push to jump to the sampler and also for the sample edit, the key differentiator that really sets the MPC Live apart is the ability when you're using the sampler, the fact that you can do pad tap for where you want it to go. If you want a particular part of that sample to be up in the corner and you can just hit arm and record and then you can just put it where you want it to be. Such a nice feature. And considering that you have all these pads to work with here on the force, it would have been so nice to record something longer and immediately start arranging where you want those slices to be, but no, it's gotta go in order. Definitely gonna give this win to the NPC Live. Okay, round six. Equally related to sampling would have to be the audio in and out. Now this one is a really tough round because there are such distinct pros and cons to each one of them. I mean, right off the bat, the Akai Force, as you have XLR, they definitely could have probably found some room on here to do that for the MPC Live, especially when this is so focused on sampling. The Force also has a knob that controls the volume input for each side. The MPC Live only has one of those. But on the flip side, you only have four outputs on the Force and you got six over here on the MPC Live. Essentially have three different stereo buses going out. That is such a great advantage. A few little other things that I think are worth noting. The Kai Force having a headphone jack that's right here on the front to have a separate Q mix. The one in the back of the MPC Live is what you would expect. It's nothing to write home about if you write home to your mom about the gear that you use. And then I consider this to be a negative, the speaker that's built in here because it feels so worthless to me. It's kind of in the way, the fact that it's right here in the front. It's like almost a little meat grinder. You're gonna get a bunch of your skin in here. You're gonna use it like an armrest. Why do they just put it in the back? 
I'll make it detachable. It sounds pretty bad too. So in our Street Fighter matchup, this is going to be one of those rounds where they're both like going all the way down to the wire. I'm going to have to give this one to the Force. The speaker is what lost it. It's just so stupid. So Force wins that round, but just barely. Okay, Kai Force still in the lead, Ford 2. But like I said, don't count out the NPC Live. This thing has got some fight in it. This next round, we're, we're going to talk about MIDI. And the NPC Live has got some huge strengths in this regard. The first being that it's got full size MIDI out. I don't know about you, but I hate these little small plugs, the DIN ones where you have to have a separate adapter cable. That's just one more thing to lose. So the fact that you have full size MIDI. And then secondly, you have two separate MIDI outs. And don't even get me started on the new updates to the software. It allows you to instantly recognize any gear that comes in and adjust all the routing for that. I mean, I really hope that this is something that's going to find a way onto the force because that's a big deal. So big punches already. Full size MIDI, two MIDI ports, all this new MIDI configuration for the software. And then also you have the ability to be able to use MIDI on the XY pad. And also you have the ability on these pads to be able to sign them to specific MIDI notes. So this round, no questions, the NPC Live totally knocks out the force. Okay, round eight. We're going to talk about CV controls. Now these ones are pretty similar in terms of the way that they would be assigned. Uh, on the fours, it's a little bit more basic when you're going to put in a new track and you're going to put a CV track in here and you want to be able to control that. You simply go to track edit. You can then assign a lot of these knobs to go to specific CV controls. That's a pretty nice feature. The NPC Live is much more basic. It's not going to give you that sort of live control over things, but this is a big but. You have essentially eight outs. You have to use stereo splitters, which I think is a little bit lame. I mean, I suppose if you're just trying to be economical in the back, my concern, I haven't tested it, but my concern would be that there's going to be some noise issues. When you're dealing with electricity, things just have a tendency to get squirrely. So I do feel like the doubling up the CV outputs is risky. I did a video with the MPC-1 controlling some modular gear. If you missed that, you can click on it up here. And I did notice some electrical things going on and I wasn't even splitting them. So just be aware of that. But there's a really big difference between four and eight. You know, it's twice as many. So gonna give this win to the MPC Live. Okay, next round, we're gonna talk about sort of a performance element around muting tracks. And one nice thing that has been added to the MPC Live is it's actually got a whole button to jump right to muting different tracks here so that you can turn them on and off and you can hit it again if you want to go to pad mute. However, on the force, it's kind of this advantage of having more buttons. And one of those key things is you have the ability to mute right on the bottom. You have a choice of what you want this bottom row to be. If you want that to be for muting different tracks, you can simply turn on and off those tracks. And that's not as easy to get to from the MPC lock. I have to go to mute here and then I got to turn those on and off. So you can't mute at the same time as you're playing or as on the force. And I want to mute some of the tracks at the same time. I would just click this on mute and I can mute them and still be playing. Some might argue if you don't do much muting, that's not that big of a deal. So in terms of muting tracks, definitely gonna give the force a win on this one. Not bad. Now don't walk out of this yet. Don't leave the stadium. This is still a close match. The NPC Lives definitely is not down for the count yet. And let's talk about the note repeat, which is a really big element. The note repeat is what you would expect on here. You can simply click on this button and it gives you the ability to see the different speeds that are here. On the Kai Force, it's a little bit more cumbersome. 
you have to push shift to get to that, which is an awkward motion. I mean, who wants to do this? So this one is a pretty subtle difference. The MPC Live, just the fact that when you push this no repeat down, it automatically brings up those options. That's a really great workflow. I wish that that was the case over here. When you push this down, that it would bring it up. You didn't have to push the shift button. And that shift button is a real pain in the butt to use. So barely a victory, but I'm gonna give this one to the MPC Live. Okay, we're 10 rounds in with the Force and the MPC Live both winning five rounds. So it's tied, three rounds left, so don't leave yet. This round, we're gonna talk about a really unusual matchup. This is not something you normally talk about, which is the power. I mean, like literally, they're plugging this thing in. The reason that I bring this up is because the MPC Live, it's battery powered. The fact that you can just unplug this thing, take it somewhere, not have to worry about power for a little bit. So this is not even really a contest. The NPC Live basically walked in the ring, punched the force in the face, and it was over. Okay, NPC Live in the lead for the first time in this whole match. Only two rounds left. Who's gonna be the ultimate winner? For this round, we're gonna talk about mixing. And I do like the fact that both of them have an easy button right in the front. You can just push mix, brings you right to that page. On the force, you push mixer, brings you right to that page. I mean, this is a tough round because they are pretty close to each other. Same ability to work with plugins. I do like the fact that on the NBC Live that if you click it again, you get to the pad mixer, which is the mixing the individual levels. On the force, you would have to go to pad mixer this way and then you could start adjusting those particular levels so pad mixer is another step and this is a tough call but i'm gonna have to give the final win to the force because of the fact that you kind of want a mixer to be vertical a mixer has sliders that move up and down. This has a slider that moves up and down for that particular channel, but the fact that you can sit here and you can mix going across in this way is really nice. Not really fair, but if you're on the knobs and you want to go to volume, it allows you to be able to use the knobs to change all these levels. On the MPC Live, you can sort of do that too. It does adjust a row, but you can only do four at a time. Again, you might argue with me here. You might like this format better, but I'm the ref, sorry. And I'm gonna give it to the force because it feels more like a real mixer. I'm not gonna apologize for that. And you can push this button down here and it jumps directly to the master track. That's pretty nice. Okay, we're here, the last round, 13th round. On this final one, we're gonna talk about workflow. And in some ways, you might have to put all the MPC pieces of gear on the right-hand side for this one, the MPC-1, the MPC-X, the MPC-Live, because they all use the same sort of workflow. And the Force is much more similar to Ableton Live than it is to the MPC software. The one thing that I think is a little bit of a disadvantage for the MPC-Live is when you're on a sequence, and you determine how many bars that's going to be, all the tracks on there need to follow that same format. So they're all gonna be 16 bars. The advantage of the force is that in this row, I could have this be a bar loop that continues to loop over and over again, and this one could be 16 bars. On the MPC Live, you don't have that option. Again, once you're in a particular sequence, it all has to be that same amount. Another advantage for the force is that I can very easily see that for this particular row and this idea, these tracks are gonna be silent. There's nothing playing and ones are playing over here. And I can mix and match them. I could trigger this clip from down here if I wanted to put the drums in or take them out. So I could mix any of the clips from this row with any of the other clips to come up with entirely different arrangements than something that's very linear. This allows for a lot more spontaneous combination of your different loops and ideas. And to me, that's really the biggest game changer about the Akai Force is this adoption of the Ableton format, this looping format. Now, if you're not an Ableton user and you kind of even don't like how that works, this workflow might already be in your brain from someone who had been using Ableton a lot. When I tried to use this format on the MPC Live, I got extremely frustrated. And what I really don't understand about the MPC workflow is the way that they separate their MIDI and the audio tracks. 
To me, it's just a track. I think about them equally. And I like the fact that on the Force, the MIDI tracks and the audio tracks, they're just a row. So I could have an audio track here, then a MIDI track, audio track, that could be mixed together in a manner that makes sense to the song. But on MPC Live, when you go to track view, the audio tracks and the MIDI tracks are separate. And even when you're on the home, you have to go back and forth between the two of them here, which again, I just think is totally silly. It just doesn't make sense to my brain. So definitely gonna give the force a win on this one. All right, there you have it. Kai Force is the winner. Now, some of you might have been like, I could see this coming from a mile away because I have this whole series called Force, Force Fridays. Fridays. If you haven't seen those, you can click up here to catch the whole playlist. I own the Force, so I am definitely more of a Force user than I am an MPC Live user. And did I already tell you that I hate this speaker? Oh, I guess, you know, to be fair, Force is now less money than the MPC Live. So considering that, I also definitely give the win to the Force. That's the end of the Street Fighter matchup. If you have some other suggestions for pieces of gear that I should do Street Fighter videos for, let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this, please hit that like button and consider subscribing to my channel, which is all about music production with a new video each week.